everybody, welcome to UK Gaming Network. I'm Brian, also known as UKGN Zoidberg, and this is Best 10, the monthly series of videos where we pick a category and then I go through my personal picks for what are the 10 best things in it. I'm not in any way suggesting that this is a definitive list and my personal picks might be completely different to your 10 and that's perfectly fine. I would love to know what your picks are in the comments please do let me know, along with any suggestions of subjects that I can cover in future episodes. So without further ado, let's pick the best 10 lead characters in Amiga games. WizKid WizKid, the story of Wizball 2. How can anyone dislike a character whose main objective is to rescue kittens? The actual game of WizKid is extremely difficult to categorise, which is why it hasn't yet appeared in a retro game Super League, and it's definitely one of the most bizarre and infectiously addictive games on the Amiga. None of the game makes a great deal of sense, but through it all, Wizkid keeps on smiling and so will you. The way he conducts the 1812 overture on the title screen lets you know instantly that this is a game with bags of personality. Roger Wilco, the Space Quest series. A space janitor, or sanitation engineer if you prefer, who became the accidental hero of six games. Constantly beaten down by the system, despite his heroics, and fully aware that he's in a computer game, he even refers to the previous events by the sequel number that they happened in. What makes him stand out is the many humorous ways in which he can die. The game's designers specifically set out to make each death a laugh out loud moment. Yes, the Amiga versions of these games were never as good as the PC, and a lot of the jokes have aged badly, but I did really enjoy them when they came out, and that's why it's included in the list. Joe. Yo Joe beat the ghosts. Whether he's punching and kicking goons, leaping around platforms, swimming through catacombs or taking on Jason Voorhees wannabes with a pair of nunchucks, graffiti artist Joe is so cool that he never once takes off his shades. If that's not enough to convince you that he should be on this list, he does it all while sporting the mightiest quiff since Elvis. I mean, you could be player two and play as his best mate Nat, who has almost all the same abilities, but his bandana is nowhere near as cool. If you are playing it two player, expect fights over who gets to be player one. Rick Dangerous, Rick Dangerous and Rick Dangerous 2. Blatant Indiana Jones ripoff he may be, he even starts out the first game running from a boulder for heaven's sake, but the player's bond with Rick is formed immediately after his first death. The way that he cries like a baby as he falls off the screen to his demise makes you want to protect him at all costs, and course designers exploit that to the max by providing many ways for him to die. By the second game, he'd morphed into Flash Gordon and jetted off into space without even batting an eyelid. Definitely the sign of a true hero. Cool Coyote Fire and Ice, The Daring Adventures of Cool Coyote There are too many platform heroes on the Amiga, such as Zool, who are trying too hard to be liked. Or there's the likes of Superfrog, who just looked so smug that you wanted to slap him. 
Cool Coyote, on the other hand, is just happy to be here, wagging his tail as he goes about rescuing puppies and saving the world. Whether he's sporting a really snazzy pair of skiing goggles or a Santa suit, he's an absolute joy to control, and makes the game one of the best platformers on the Amiga. He can also play the piano like a boss. Rough Rogers, Rough and Tumble. Rough Rogers is an eight year old who's lost his marbles, quite literally. He's also an eight year old sporting a machine gun that's almost as big as he is. Jason Perkins and the team at Wunderkind set out to make a game that would give the Amiga owners a console style experience, and to be frank, they knocked it out of the park. It's an incredibly good looking game, full of attitude, and that comes from the central character. He may not be the most expressive platform hero, but who's going to argue with him when he's pointing a flamethrower at you? Simon, Simon the Sorcerer. Adventure game protagonists need to essentially be the audience, and Simon, being somebody transported into the game from our world, is the perfect commentator for this silly and very British fantasy story. He reacts to what's going on around him in exactly the same way that the player would, and constantly breaks the fourth wall throughout. The game doesn't try to hide its influences either, and instead simply embraces them. Try to play the CD32 version though, as that's fully voiced, and he's voiced by Chris Barry, which is absolutely perfect casting. No one will miss this old thing. James Pond. James Pond Underwater Agent, James Pond 2 Codename Robocod, The Aquatic Games, and James Pond 3 Operation Starfish. James Pond may be a fish, but he's got an almost chameleon-like ability to adapt to his environment. The first game is set almost entirely underwater, so he is basically just a fish in a tuxedo. By the second game, he'd become part fish, part machine, and in the third, he was able to breathe in space and had grown legs. He also put those legs to great use, taking part in the aquatic games. All of it is accompanied by some of the happiest soundtracks on the Amiga. If he'd taken up kart racing as well, we could have called in the Amiga's own Mario. Conrad B. Hart Flashback If you've seen the film Total Recall, Conrad Hart is an almost carbon copy of that film's hero, Douglas Quaid, but that doesn't lessen the quality of his character in any way. He gives off an effortless cool, rocking a casual jeans, t-shirt and jacket combo as he goes about saving the world. Even his run is more of a casual jog than a sprint, signifying just how much he laughs in the face of danger. He even takes time out from his mission to be a contestant on a primetime TV show. The super slick animation makes him instantly iconic to gamers too. Brush Threepwood, The Secret of Monkey Island, Monkey Island 2, LeChuck's Revenge. To everyone around him, Guybrush Threepwood is a bit of a joke, but part of what makes him so endearing is the fact that he's completely oblivious to how the rest of the world sees him. 
He believes that he's going to be a mighty pirate, or is one in the sequel, and remains steadfast in the pursuit of his goal. The boundless enthusiasm with which he sets about his adventures makes him an absolute joy to play as. It also helps that the Monkey Island games, particularly the first two, are amongst the most well-written games of all time. <laughs>